Hello, my name is Stuart Butchart and I'm Chief Scientist at BirdLife International. And today I want to talk about some work that we published last year, led by colleagues at the University of Newcastle involving many collaborators, but it's highly relevant to the theme of Earth optimism. It addresses the question of how successful conservation has been in saving species from extinction. And indeed, this was one of 10 areas of hope, positive stories of conservation success that were highlighted in the Global Biodiversity Outlook uh, released by the Convention on Biological Diversity last autumn. So 10 years ago, um, the world's governments uh, adopted a strategic plan on biodiversity with 20 so-called Aichi biodiversity targets. And target 12 committed the parties to the convention to preventing the extinction of known threatened species. So we wanted to um, uh, determine how successful um, the world had been at preventing extinctions. Uh, we asked this question then, how many species would have gone extinct without conservation action? And we looked at the period since 2010, the lifetime of IT target 12, and the period since 1993, um, the lifetime of the uh, Convention on Biological Diversity. And we focused on mammals and birds, as the best known groups of organisms who are with substantial resonance with the public and groups that receive a disproportionate conservation attention. Now, as I go through this talk, uh, I want you to bear in mind that every image shows a species that wouldn't be here today without um, conservation efforts uh, over the last few decades. Species like the Puerto Rican Amazon, um, which would have been wiped out by hurricanes in 2017, were it not for um, a captive breeding program um, and a release into the wild of a new population um, that were the only individuals that survived following those hurricanes. So to identify uh, species like this, we first drew up a list of candidates that could plausibly have gone extinct uh, without conservation action. And we documented for each species the key factors necessary to evaluate whether actions implemented could plausibly have prevented extinction. And we asked experts to estimate the probability that each species would have disappeared in a scenario where no conservation action had taken place. So we identified and uh, looked at um, any species, all species that have been classified as extinct in the wild, critically endangered or endangered uh, at any point since 1993. And then two groups of authors independently reviewed that list, compared results, and drew up an agreed shortlist. We compiled information on their population size and trends over the period, the threats impacting them, and the conservation actions that were implemented. We then um, uh, asked key experts on each species to review that documentation, fill in gaps, and uh, provide updates. And that led to us um, having a final um, shortlist of 39 bird and 21 mammal species, including things like the Iberian lynx, shown here, for which conservation actions to boost rabbit populations, their main prey, and reduce road collisions, their primary threat, um, are estimated to have prevented the extinction of the species in recent years. And we then carried out an expert elicitation exercise, a so-called Delphi process, which is based on the idea that decisions from a structured group of individuals are likely to be more accurate than those from unstructured groups. So we pulled together 45 evaluators, experts in species conservation from around the world to anonymously estimate the likelihood that each species would have gone extinct without conservation action in each time period. And we asked those experts to estimate the minimum and maximum probability and provide their best estimate. We shared the um, average scores and medians with all evaluators. And then we had some marathon teleconference calls where all the evaluators discussed each species in turn with each expert providing their um, views and insights and opinions on why they um, uh, believe the probability is um, higher or lower. Uh, and then we asked the evaluators to revise their scores again anonymously 
to incorporate any insights gained during the calls. And we concluded from um, the results, the final um, median scores across all the evaluators, that between 21 and 32 bird species would have gone extinct without conservation action since 1993, the lifetime of the CBD. The lower number, 21, represents the number of species with a median probability of more than 90%. The higher number, um, the number of species with a probability of more than 50%, more likely than not. This included species like the yellow-eared parrot from Colombia, which recovered from just a few individuals to over 2,000 by 2019 as a result of habitat protection and restoration, public, a public awareness campaign, and a ban on the use of wax palms, uh, which the species is highly dependent upon for nesting. Without these actions, our experts evaluated that there was between a 60 and 90% probability the species would have disappeared, with the best estimate of 80%. Over the last decade, um, between nine and 18 bird species were judged to have been likely to have gone extinct without conservation action. Species like the Spixes macaw, which was driven extinct in the wild in 2001 as a result of trapping for the cage bird trade and habitat loss. And it now survives only in captivity with an active conservation program to reintroduce them to the wild. For mammals, the numbers were a little lower, between seven and 16 mammal species would have gone extinct without conservation action since 93. Species such as the black-footed ferret from the prairies of North America, where captive breeding and release uh, is judged to have prevented extinction uh, as a result of habitat loss, disease, and inbreeding. Since 2010, between two and seven mammal species would have gone extinct without actions, like the scimitar horned oryx, which was lost in the wild in Sahel in the 1990s as a result of overhunting and habitat loss. And it again survives only in captivity uh, with a large scale reintroduction project now underway. The bird species were quite widely um, uh, distributed, the countries in which they're found, um, with the largest numbers in New Zealand, Brazil, and Mexico. And two thirds of these species are restricted to islands, like the black stilt here from New Zealand, where control of hybrids with the pied stilt and habitat management and a, and a number of other actions are estimated to have prevented the extinction of this species. The countries in which um, the mammals that were prevented from going extinct occur were similarly widespread, um, with the largest numbers in China, Vietnam, and the USA. But only one in five are restricted to islands. The majority are continental species, like the Shabulski's horse, shown here, from China and Mongolia. Um, about half of both the birds and the mammals are still classified as critically endangered, so a very high risk of extinction but half of those birds are, um, have stable or increasing populations, whereas only a third of the mammals do, indicating perhaps that we've been um, slightly more successful in helping these highly threatened species to recover among the birds compared with the mammals. The key threats um, to these species were for birds, the impacts of invasive alien species, um, overhunting and trapping, and uh, unsustainable um, agriculture. Uh, and similarly for mammals, but with the key threat, uh, the most uh, important being uh, overhunting. Consequently, the key actions that helped to prevent extinction were control, management and eradication of invasive species, ex situ conservation and um, site protection for birds, um, and legislation, species reintroduction and ex situ conservation for mammals. We then compared the numbers of species um, for which extinction had been prevented with the actual number of extinctions. Uh, since 1993, at least 15 birds and mammals are estimated or thought um, highly likely to have gone extinct. And at least one since 2010, the Alagoas foliage gleaner from um, Brazil. If we then look at the numbers of extinctions prevented, we find that the um, conservation action reduced the rate of extinctions between three and four fold since 1993. And since, in, since uh, 2010, um, uh, the number may be more than order of magnitude higher. 
Now we know that extinctions are difficult to detect and document, but even if the same rate of extinction had occurred since 1993, if that rate had continued since 2010, conservation action would have slowed the rate of extinction two to four times. So substantial uh, um, conservation impact. But these results are conservative uh, in terms of the impact of conservation because our shortlist may have missed some candidates. Uh, we looked at um, uh, species with the definition um, of extinct being the death of the last individual in the wild. Whereas we know that there may have been some functional extinctions, but a few old and perhaps um, reproductively not very successful uh, individuals remaining, species like the Ocarito kiwi. We also only looked at birds and mammals, um, but uh, we know that there are at least, for example, 66 other species classified as extinct in the wild on the IUCN red list. So many other species of, of uh, other taxonomic groups likely to have been prevented from going extinct. And we only looked at species on the brink of extinction, uh, many uh, slightly less threatened species benefited as a result of conservation actions over recent years. Conversely, though, um, not all of these extinction prevented can be um, uh, seen as conservation successes. Some species like the vaquita from um, a small porpoise from uh, Mexico are very highly threatened, just half a dozen individuals still surviving in the wild. And conservation here may have simply slowed the trajectory towards extinction. Keeping this species alive and helping it to recover is proving hugely challenging. So governments are now um, negotiating a new post-2020 global biodiversity framework. Um, and the, the first draft of this that came out um, didn't have any target to prevent extinctions uh, or any commitments to implement the actions needed to help species recover. But as a result of uh, intensive advocacy, the latest draft does include a target, number three, um, to take the actions needed to promote the recovery of highly threatened species. So this is really encouraging. And BirdLife and others are now working hard to encourage governments to adopt an ambitious framework with bold commitment to prevent human-induced extinctions and help species recover and put us on a path to achieving the CBD vision of a world living in harmony with nature by 2050. And we hope that they will be inspired by the successes we've had so far, recognizing that all of the species shown here and many others only survive today because of ded dedicated conservation efforts. All of these would have gone extinct, disappeared forever without conservation action. But these efforts must be scaled up many fold to retain and recover the rich natural heritage that we want to pass on to future generations. Thank you very much.